Hello everyone, in this video I'll be doing a complete tutorial and guide in UI. I'll be going over understanding the screen and how to scale, size and position UI correctly, as well as the different types of GUI objects and UI elements. Other than that, let's get straight into understanding the screen and how to scale, size and position UI correctly. The player screen is made up of hundreds of pixels along the X and Y axes. This pixel count is what makes up our resolution. The resolution can change between devices, but the most common will be 1920 by 1080. Here are a few examples there. Let's say we head over here to the start of GUI and create a screen GUI inside it. And then for example's sake, I'm going to create a frame. Now our frame is currently positioned at 00 on the offset by default. Let's say we move it to 100 by 0 now. As you can see, it moves on the x-axis by 100 pixels. Let's try 500 now and 1800 now. You can see how our frame is positioned at 1800 pixels from 0, 0. Yet look what happens when we switch to a smaller resolution device. But now suddenly our frame has disappeared from the screen and that's because our device is now 768 pixels on the x-axis whereas we've positioned our frame 1800 pixels on the x-axis. To fix this, if we switch to using scale instead of the offset, we can now position our frame from 0 to 1. 0 being the very left and 1 very right. 0 0.5 would be right in the middle like so. Now if we switch back to 1920 by 1080, you can see that regardless of our screen dimensions, it stays in the middle at 0 0.5. We can also set our Y axis to 0 0.5 in the middle too. Now we can actually put this into practice. If we head over to our frame here and scroll down, you can actually see the four numbers that were displayed on the screen earlier. If we open this up, you can actually see our X and Y axes, and then our scale and offset. Now if we go to our offset and set to 100 like the example, you can actually see it moves 100 pixels, same with our emulator here, 100 pixels. Now we can actually use our scale as well. If we go back here and do something around 0.2, as you can see it's 0.2 here, 0.2 here, and on 1080 0.2 here. Same with 0.5 in the middle and it's in the middle you can see how anchor point lines up here now, the same logic applies to our size as well if we head down to the size here open up each thing and change out and change our F offset to something bigger something like 500 by 500 as you can see it, it's fine here in this viewport but when we switch to a mobile device like this phone it covers the entire screen and that's because it's using the offset now if we switch to scale like so we go 0.2 and 0 0.5 so it's a half of the screen and then 0 0.2 on the x-axis here you can see that it actually keeps up its, its dimensions and that's because we're using scale frame is a simple rectangle that is made up of eight vertices which can all be dragged in their respective axes like so the co some common uses for the frame is to be used as a container to store other elements or just used as a background element now like majority of UI objects, you can also change the color, its transparency, border pixel size, its name, position, sizing. The text label in simple terms is basically just a frame that you can change the text that's within it. So if we scroll down here in our properties, you can actually see that we have a property called text. We can change this to what we want. Let's say hello. We also have choices of different types of fonts. So it's in its bold here, uh, rich text and text scaled we have heaps of different options here and you can still change it like how it is like a regular frame you can change its background transparency its color things like that it also has its own texture transparency and text uh texture color but i'll get into it there's better options to getting a border around your text the text box is basically just a text label that we can change the text of so as you can see i can actually type in here i can let go Go in and type again. You can also uh, scroll down here and turn on text wraps, which will wrap text for us if it's too big. So if we go up to like 50 here, as you can see, when I reach the end, it goes down another line. A text button is a text label, but we can actually click on it. As you can see, when I hover over it, uh, it gets dark and you click on it. And you can actually disable this hovering if you click on the button here and scroll down. It has auto button color, which you can disable. But as you can see, my mouse cursor still swaps to the, the finger clicking uh, when I hover over it. An image label is just a frame, but we can actually put an image on top of it. So if we scroll down here, you can actually see there's an image 
uh, property here if we paste in an ID to an image or you can just upload one through the asset manager that's up here but currently I'm not published so it's not visible and we set our transparency to something transparent as you can see we actually have an image here if we change this back to uh, not being transparent and then go to our image color we can also change the image as long as it's white or something similar to white and we can also change things like the image transparency itself so 0.5 will go somewhat transparent and yeah the image button is like a image label but like the text label and the text button and we can just now click it as you can see my it gets darker when i hover over it a scrolling frame is just a frame but now that we actually have a scroll bar we can scroll up and down to increase the scroll we can just head down here and go to the canvas size here we can uh double it on the scale and as you can see it gets much bigger we can go even bigger we can go to something like five and as you can see the the slider actually gets much much smaller and you can see we can scroll for much longer here the same applies to the other direction we also have scrolling direction and scroll bar thickness so we can actually change the size of the scroll bar as you can see it gets smaller here you can completely disable it and it's just scrolling you can actually disable scrolling entirely which uh if you don't want it to scroll at sometimes and we can also change the direction that we want to scroll in by changing the canvas size we can do that so if we set this back to something like zero we set this to something like five as you can see we can now scroll in the other direction so if we take back our scroll bar as you can see we now have one at the bottom instead but because this square is the entire size of the scrolling frame i change it to something like 0 0.1 instead as you can see uh, we can now actually scroll on a different axis a viewport frame allows us to put a 3d object something like a part or a model within it and then it will be displayed as a 2d thing so for example if i create a part here as you can see we have a part and i make it let's say a bit bigger on this dimension and i make it uh red like so if i now drag this part into my viewport frame go to my viewport frame here scroll down to the current camera we can then select a camera now you can create your own camera but for example sake i'm just going to use the one in the workspace as you can see, it now actually displays on our screen. I can move around like so. I can actually remove the background as well. As you can see, I can remove the background. And then when I'm done with this, if I actually just delete the camera, this is a quick trick. It'll keep it in its position and we can move it around. And this is now a 3D object we can use wherever we want in our UI. So if I go to our part here and I can change the color, it'll change the color like so. Now you actually might be seeing this uh, slight outline around it. If you want to fix this, it's very simple. Uh, you can, it's a quick trick if you go to a viewport frame. And even though our background is transparent, if we change the color here, the same color as our object, as you can see, it now uh, gets rid of the outline. As you can see, there's an outline here. Screen color, and you click on it. You can also pick something like a very dark color, and it won't show up if you don't know what the color of your object is going to be. And yeah, that's viewport frames. UI corner allows you to round off corners to certain objects like frames or text labels. In this example, I have a frame here, so if I set the scale of it to, let's say, 0 0.1, as you can see, our corners get even more curved. If you want something less subtle, you can go 0 0.5. Now, because this is scale, depending on how size your, the, the size of your object, it might change. Now, rounded corners does remove your border around an object if you have one, but you can bring that back with the next UI component. UI stroke allows us to add a border to our elements even if they are rounded off like this frame here. We can also change the color of our uh, border here and we can also change the join mode. So if we set our thickness to 25 and ch change our join mode to bevel, as you can see it's beveled off. And then the one below it will actually square it off and then the one below it will go back to round. We can also change the transparency here. Now on the other hand, if we go to our UI stroke here and we change our or, uh, apply stroke mode to contextual it will actually go around our text here and we can actually change the size of that here as well UI gradient allows us to make a smooth tr transition between colors so if we actually open up the color sequencer here and we click on a color we can do something like red and as you can see it transitions from red to white and we can also change the other color at the end to something like blue you can also click wherever you want in the color sequencer to add a color and we can change it to something like green and you can move these around or specifically put in a time for example 0.5 is right in the middle 
I also want to say that it's based off your background color as well, or it gets uh, affected by it. So if you change your background color to something like darker here, you actually see how it gets lighter and darker. If you actually choose a color, it changes completely. So make sure if you do want your colors to be accurate, you set your background color to zero. Also doing your transparency does affect it as well, as well as the UI grain here affects the transparency itself, as you can see here. And this also uh, uh, opens a number sequence if you want to edit it more in depth. You can also change the rotation, as you can see we've rotated by 90 degrees here, and you can also change the offset if you want to move it somewhere. Uh, 10 is going to completely move it, but if you do something like 0 0.5, it moves it 0 0.5 over. UI grid layout takes any elements within a frame or another type of object and lays them out in a grid regardless of their size, as you can see they're overrided here and their position. So if we keep in adding objects in here, you can actually see they're added within this grid format and they'll automatically go to the next line when they fill up. We can also change our grid size to whatever we want. Let's say I want to do something small on the y-axis, you can also do that. Or something smaller on the x-axis, you can also do that. You can also change the uh, padding between the objects uh, like normal. You can also change the fill direction. So if you want to change it to vertically, you can also do that. And as you can see, when I add, it goes in a vertical direction instead. And you can also change things like uh, where it starts. So if you want to do bottom left, top right, you can change wherever you want it to start. And you can do its alignment. So bottom, it'll snap to the bottom. UI table takes any elements within a object like a frame or any other type of UI object and aligns them either going vertical or horizontal and you can actually change this here in the fill direction if we choose horizontal as you can see they're laid out horizontal this way and if we go back to something like vertical they go back to the vertical now it does have some visual bugs but clicking on it simply fixes that if we go down here to padding we can also change the padding let's say we do 10 pixels on the offset it adds padding within all the objects and once I send you have to click on it to update the visual bug but as you can see there we have them laid out and this will automatically scale depending on how many objects are in as you can see here we have three here we have two here we go back to something like uh, horizontal here click on them fix them as you can see they uh, go into a layout UI list layout aligns any elements within a, let's say like a frame or another type of object in a list and that can be either vertically like so or horizontally and as you can see for every object I hear automatically aligns it uh, going down and we, got, and we can also change the order so if we do something like horizontal as you can see it goes horizontal if we change the sizing of all these to something like 0 0.1 by uh, 1 0 as you can see it's aligned the other direction now and it goes horizontally Unlike the table layout, it won't automatically fill gaps, and that's the difference between the list and table. We can also add a padding here, so 0.1, as you can see it moves over, that's a bit too big, 0.5, you can see the differences between them all. We add another one here, and yeah, that's UI list layout. UI size constraint allows us to keep a size of an object to a limit, regardless of its size. So as you can see, if I go to a UI, so right here I do max size and let's say the X is, let's say a thousand. Thousand is very big. Right now our object is below a thousand. But as soon as I scratch past it, it's actually going to stop scaling. As you can see, uh, it hits its limit. If we set something like this to 400, um, as you see it got smaller. And if I try to make it any bigger than what it, uh, the limit, it won't scale. UI aspect ratio allows us to keep the size of the objects to a scale or a ratio. Uh, regardless on the screen dimension. So as you can see here, in this viewport size, my square here is perfectly a square. It's 278 by 278 pixels. But when I switch devices, it's, it gets elongated. And because even though we're using size on our, or even though we're using scale here on our size, you can see that 0.2 of this screen is much more stretched than 0.2 on this screen. And to fix that, we add a UI aspect ratio constraint which then we can write in our aspect ratio. Now, because this is a square, a one-to-one -one ratio is basically a square. So if you can see here, it now actually stays to its size. Now, this is really uh, useful for when creating um, frames and you don't want them to distort in their size. And as I see, I have this thing here. And if I click this, its size gets much longer. If I go to a different device, like an iPad 2, it gets squished. And that's where you need to use aspect ratio constraint 
Now you can calculate these ratios with uh, math, but I have a plugin that I'm going to show later that automatically does it for you. Let's say you have this box here and you want to position it perfectly in the bottom and in the middle. We can actually use something that's called an anchor point. Now currently our anchor point is set to zero zero and there's a tiny little square and you can't really see it because um, this vertice is covering it. But there's a little square here and that uh, represents our anchor point. So if we set our anchor point to 0 0.5, it will then move to the middle of the object. When we set this to 0 0.5, move to the middle object here and now you can actually see our anchor point is in exactly the middle. So let's say we set I think to 0 0.5. As you can see, it's 0 0.5. It's exactly in the middle of the screen. But if our anchor point was zero, it'd actually be offset because it's in the it's in the very side here. And that's how we position things perfectly in the screen. So if we do 0 0.5 by 0 0.5, regardless of the size of our object, if we change this to 0 0.5, it'll always stay in the middle of the screen. As you see here, and that works for all devices. This is also really important when doing things like aspect ratios. If you change your aspect ratio, it's not going to stay in the middle. Uh, when you switch between devices. Now talking about aspect ratios, I actually have a plugin that perfectly does them for us. So let's make this bigger and let's make this, uh, let's say 0 0.5 by 0 0.4, as you can see here. And we switch to the device. I didn't see it actually gets longer and we actually, I actually have a plugin up here that's called Smart Scale. And if we actually click on this, it'll, we wait a bit, it will automatically create our aspect ratio within here. And now when we switch to devices, it will keep its size. I'll actually link this plugin below. There's a free and paid version, but they're pretty much the exact same. Uh, adding on to anchor points, if we want to position something perfectly at the bottom of our screen, like so, uh, as you can see, it's actually perfectly positioned. Now it is misaligned in the middle. Let me fix that real quick. It's perfectly at the uh, bottom of your screen, as you can see here. But let's say we add something to the size. Let's say 0 0.8, we make it bigger. And let's delete our aspect ratio real quick. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't scale up from the bottom. And if we want to do that, we can actually set our anchor point to 1. And then if we set our position to something like 1, you actually see now it scales from the bottom. So we do 0 0.5, it scales up from... And if, let's say we do something 0 0.9, it's not perfect at the bottom. It keeps its same property. So 0 0.8, it scales up. And that's how anchor point works. Hopefully this complete guide on UI gave you an overall understanding of absolutely everything to do with UI and that includes like things like scaling, different types of UI elements and different types of UI uh, components. Um, this took a very, very long time to edit, uh, pretty much over like three days to edit and it'd mean a lot if you guys could subscribe. And yeah, other than that, see you in the next video.